Perhaps more than in any other place, Ekun found his home in books. What up my channel? Welcome back to another video. I'm Jesse, and you're watching. Welcome to my next book recommendations video. I love doing dedicated book recs on this channel. So if there's a set of books that you'd like me to do recommendations for at some point in the future, comment down below and let me know. I'm going to leave a playlist of the other book recommendations that I've done here on bow ties and books. But today's episode is going to be exclusively recommending African fantasy books. Fantasy books that are set in Africa or have an African inspired setting. Africa is a vast, beautiful continent with so many different types of stories. And so some of these books are going to to be North African, some of them are going to be West African, East African, etc. And all of them are going to be in the fantasy genre. But before we hop into the nitty and the gritty of these books, I want to give a big, 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 big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is none other than PETA Entertainment. PETA Entertainment, PETA Entertainment is one of my favorite comic houses. They are black owned. The owner and CEO and founder is an absolute sweetheart. They are based in Lagos, Nigeria and focus exclusively on African comics and storytelling, employing African illustrators and writers to tell bold, beautiful narratives that showcase the diversity and culture and brilliance of Africa as a continent. I absolutely love how much they've managed to accomplish in only three short years. They have put out some amazing freaking books, just the most lavishly creative stories that one can imagine. The artists that they work with are unreal, like top tier artwork. Every single one of their books is just bursting with color and storytelling and mythos and magic. They definitely have the potential to be a huge comic book powerhouse and that is what I want to see in their future. I want PETA to grow into this giant amazing company that puts out African comic books. African graphic novels and comic books as well as the authors and illustrators of those books do not get centered and hyped the way that they should. And so I think that this is a really, really, really amazing house for y'all to be putting your money towards following them, supporting them, staying tuned on their Kickstarters because since they are a small black owned business, they, they are doing Kickstarters for their comics which is a really beautiful way to be a part of the making of these incredible comics. So I'm going to talk about three comics that they have put out that are absolutely amazing and I really really want y'all to read them. So the first one is going to be Olaju known as The Edge of Origins. This is a sweet touching amazing graphic novel about these tree-like creatures on this mission to save the planet. They are on this journey to save the cultivation of earth after the high priestess decides to take control of creation itself. Like I said it is bursting with color. I think that the illustration is sweet and adorable and also formidable. This comic is touching and environmental forward and we absolutely love to see it. Then we have Chayoma, which is one of my personal favorites. Chayoma is an amazing character who comes from a clan of sorcerers, a clan known for witchcraft. And she essentially has been raised to be a bringer of destruction. She's incredibly powerful. And in this book, she is kind of struggling with her destiny while also trying to step into it. And there is a curse element. I love characters that have been placed under a curse. That is another really, really amazing book bursting with color and incredible characters. We also have the Chronicles of the Newborn, Rise of the Mlezi, which has a couple of my favorite tropes. You have a ragtag group of young Africans who are from different cultures and ethnic groups. Most of them are unaware of their destiny. So there is a destiny trope and they are trying to figure out how to step into that destiny while also getting along with one another. Those are some amazing narratives that PETA is telling and they have so, so much potential. So do check out their website. Do stay tuned on their books and Kickstarters because they are literally doing the work. Like, I wish that I had had access to comics like this growing up. It would have made all of the difference. So big, big thank you to PETA Entertainment for doing the work that you do and for also being a sponsor for this video. 
So the first book that I'm going to recommend in this video is The Final Strife. You may recognize this book because I talked about it in my very first book buzz video. And Bowties and Book Buzz is my series that I just kind of launched on this channel where I give y'all the lowdown on book covers, adaptations, recently announced synopsises, synopsi, things like that. And the publisher sent me this book right after I talked about it in the video. And just look at this cover. So The Final Strife is an African and original Arabian inspired fantasy. I'm currently 200 pages into it and utterly obsessed. So essentially we are following a young woman named Sila who has been raised as an assassin. She has been raised and groomed to tear down this highly oppressive, violent, brutal empire. There are three types of people in this caste system. You have the embers who are at the top of the food chain, the dusters who are in the middle of the food chain, and the ghostings who are at the very bottom. And each of them have different colors blood and with the color of their blood comes certain abilities. It is wild. The world building is wicked lavish. It is non-binary inclusive. It is sex worker positive. The main character struggles with substance use disorder and I really like the way that it is being handled thus far. There's just so much in this book. It is a 600 page behemoth. It's almost 600 pages. I started it yesterday. I'm already on page 200. It just is incredible. It is also multi-POV but we are following mainly Sila which is good because honestly she's the only one I care about. Then we have Black Leopard Red Wolf by Caribbean author Marlon James. This has been slated for an adaptation for a while. The second book, I think it's called Moon Witch Spider King, that just came out and the cover is utterly fantastic. This is another behemoth of a novel. I think this one is like 800 pages. And this follows a tracker who has this incredible ability to locate people. And so there is a kid who goes missing. Kid's been missing for a long time and tracker decides he's hired to go find this kid. And that is one of my favorite tropes. Like, I don't know why, oddly specific favorite trope, but people who have a knack for finding something and like don't really want to do it, but people keep hiring them to go find the thing. I don't know why I love that trope so deeply. You see this trope in History of Wild Things. I absolutely loved that. You see it again in Earth Eater by Dolores Reyes, I believe. That was one of my favorite books too. So if y'all have recommendations for that oddly specific trope of somebody having an ability to locate things and people and being forced essentially by their circumstance to use that gift, please let me know in the comment section down below and maybe I will make a video about those books. It essentially follows Tracker and there is this team, another ragtag team situation where they all have special traits and abilities. One of them is a shapeshifter and they set out to go find this boy uh, who is probably dead. The setting is lavish and what's unique about this book is that it's the same story told in three different ways and you as the reader have to figure out what the true story is. It is very mythological, very dense, very deep. It's a story that you can sink into, but do look up content warnings because it is a very violent, very um, unsettling book that has a lot of content warnings, the biggest of which is sexual violence. Then we have a book that I know some of y'all are going to be like, I cannot believe you are actually recommending this because I raved, I ranted about this book when I first read it. And that book is The Rage of Dragons. When I read this book, I gave it three out of five stars and I'm certain if I read it again, which I will reread it because I do want to read the sequel, um, I'm certain I will still give it a three out of five stars because there is a lot to be desired in this book and some things that I just felt were outright problematic. That being said, this is a book that I find myself returning to frequently, thinking about frequently, and it's very interesting. And so I think the story left much more of an impact on me than I realized it did. I wasn't planning on reading the sequel. The sequel has been out for a while and I only recently have realized how much I actually do want to read it. And so this is a revenge fantasy. Essentially, as a young boy, our protagonist named Tao watches his father be taken from him. And so he essentially enlists to become a warrior and rises through the ranks, gets incredible skill and power, and he decides to use his newly acquired talents to pursue the man who took his father from him. I love the relationship between Tao and his father in this book. One of my favorite things is 
the father trope, uh, having a father who's very involved in the story, especially if it is a Black narrative. Um, I love seeing relationships in books between Black boys and their fathers. I really enjoyed the storytelling. I loved the dragon element. I loved the going into the underworld element. I loved the demons. I loved how visceral those scenes were. I loved the fight scenes. I love the fighting with the two swords. I just... that. Oh my gosh, like Tao is a character I really don't care for. I think that he's flat. I think that he lacks foresight. I think that he's very self-absorbed. I think that he hasn't grown very much at all. But the story itself, like I said, is one that I keep finding myself returning to time and time again. Oh, I am so sniffly. I forgot to take my allergy pills last night. And now I keep sneezing between takes and my nose is really red. And I feel like I sneezed off one of my eyelashes. So throughout this video, I'm going to deteriorate. Y'all are gonna have to be okay with that. I'm honestly Honestly, it's on brand for how things usually go on this channel. Oh, I feel like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer right now. So my issue with this book, as much as I was loving it, was the sexual violence. There is a, an entirely unnecessary rape scene in this book, and it was so very clearly done for shock value. And I did the whole way of how that scene was handled. I did not like. Um, there were some other sexist undertones in this book that I just didn't vibe with, which is why I initially gave it a three star. And I'm excited to reread it. I'm excited to give this book a second chance. I might reread this for like a giving author second chance video. Then we have Son of the Storm by Suyi Davies Okungbawa. I feel like I recommend this book every single day. It is amazing. We are following a scholar named Danso of a low caste and he gets blamed when this very important document goes missing in the school that he attends. And so he kind of gets kicked out of the school, kicked out of the village, and goes on this mission. He ends up being forced to go on this mission with a creature that should not exist, a being that should not exist, and on this mission he finds magic. This is a dual POV. You're following him and his fiance, who doesn't want to be married to him. She is very calculated. She is very unfriendly. She is very strategic and you can tell as the book goes on that the two of them are very much going to have to have a showdown at some point because things are not going well between them. The world building is what really shines in this book. I love that it didn't waste much time on lengthy exposition at all. It gives you the information that you need and it just goes on about its way. And I loved the ride. I loved the journey. It's like just over 400 pages, I believe. And it went through in the blink of an eye. I really hope that the sequel comes out this year. I haven't heard anything about it, so I don't know if it just hasn't been announced or if it's just not coming out this year. <sighs> but I want to read the sequel so freaking bad. Highly, highly recommend this book. Also the ornamentation the, of this book, of the world, the makeup, the costumes, all of that, just wow. And we have Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. This is another book that I believe is also getting an adaptation. It is a YA fantasy and we get to follow two characters, one of which is an atypical boy who has, I believe he has anxiety. Yeah, he has anxiety and panic attacks. And this book centers around this competition called the Sostalgia, this festival, and this boy enters in order to win because there's this spirit that has stolen his sister from him and the spirit is like if you win this competition you can get close enough to kill Karina the crown princess and I'll give you your sibling back and then we also get to follow the crown princess it is so good I had just like weird reservations about it probably because I was so freaking excited but this book exceeded all of my expectations and more I ended up giving it a four out of five stars because it most certainly wasn't a perfect novel it is a very very strong debut and I'm so excited to read the sequel my bestie Jan bought the sequel for me for Christmas and I just can't wait to read it because I'm in a big black girl magic fantasy moment then I'm gonna recommend one of my favorite books of all time which is Ray Bearer by Jordan E. Fuego Honestly, can you name a more beautiful cover in the entire world? No, you can't. No, you can't. And just like even on the inside. Oh my god. So this is another one of those. Um, oh my god, just look. It's so beautiful. So this is also getting an adaptation. I love to see all of these black authors just thriving, getting their adaptations, getting their books out into the world. 
And so this is an amazing book where we are following a girl named Tara Sai who's been raised in complete isolation and shelter in this gorgeous palace. And she's been raised by a woman, her mother, who forces her to call her the lady and nothing more. Like everyone refers to her as the lady. And the lady essentially forces Tara Sai by blood oath to enter this competition to get close to the prince, be chosen as one of his chosen council of 11 and get close to him and kill him. And so this is about what happens when she attempts that. She wants family so desperately. And so of course she becomes a part of his trusted council and falls in love with all of them, you know, of having a family of her own for the first time. And so there's that espionage element, there is blood magic, there is gorgeous, lush writing. This world just leaps off the page at you. It feels so, so real. You will fall in love with Tara Sai. She is the sweetest character. This is the first book to ever make me cry tears of joy. Did not think that that was going to happen. Um, and the scene that made me cry was a scene with Sanjit where he gets to hear something that he really wanted to hear. So if you've read this book, y'all will know what I'm talking about. I sobbed. I absolutely sobbed. Then we have A River of Royal Blood. This is another YA fantasy. It is East African expired. No, no, no. It is North African expired. Excuse me. And we are following two sisters who are fighting for the throne. The tradition is that they have to battle for the throne. One of them must die and then the other will be crowned queen. And the book one, I think this is a duology, book one was laid a lot of groundwork, really focused on the intricacies of the world, the world building, which is really complex. I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Not so much the relationship between the sisters and the dynamics between them. So I'm hoping that we get that in book two, because their relationship was very flat to me, which is why it wasn't a five out of five star, but it was such a strong, powerful debut. It had amazing themes. I got to speak with Amanda Joy via interview and it, the whole conversation, like she was such a joy. No pun intended. This also has Faye in it. So if you are a fan of Faye, definitely check this book out. And we have one of my favorite books by Dr. Nnedi Okorafor, which is Remote Control. This is a small book that packs a big, big punch. So we are following a girl named Sankofa, who everybody is really freaked out with because essentially she communes with death. And um, she basically travels throughout villages and takes away the suffering of those who are suffering. And so people will call her to their village so that she can visit their homes as death and alleviate the suffering of whoever is inside. But because of what she does, because of the service that she provides, people hate her. I cannot remember who read the audiobook, but it was just one of the most amazing audiobooks that I've ever read, like top five audiobooks of all freaking time. If you are able to listen to audiobooks, definitely, definitely listen to the audiobook for this one. It is an amazing science fiction fantasy story. And then we have Beasts of Prey. This was one of my favorite books of last year. I was shook. Like I had a feeling I was going to like this book, but I did not know that I was going to love this book. This book also has a bunch of tropes that I really enjoy. We have another YA fantasy, another dual POV where you're following a young black girl and a young black boy. Beast of Prey is set in the city of Ikosa, which was once a beautiful magical city that has now fallen out of splendor and into a ruin. And we're following a girl who is an indentured servant along with her mother and they are forced to care for these very volatile and violent beasts and creatures. And then we are also following a boy who is training to become one of the city's like most elite warriors. His brother puts a lot of pressure on him and he ends up encountering this girl during a raid and is essentially like responsible for capturing her. And then of course something happens and they're forced to go on a journey together through the dangerous woods. I love that trope. I absolutely love it. I love the beasts trope and getting close to magical beasts and where beasts are part of the world building. It is just one of my favorite things in the entire universe. I love that our black boy protagonist is neuroatypical. The world building is great. There are some amazing, beautiful quotes. Like I just flipped open the book and there's a quote that I highlighted and it says, perhaps more than in any other place, Ekon found his home in books. Absolutely, absolutely true. Five out of five stars. Cannot wait for this adaptation and I cannot wait for the next book. Then we have the Incivity Scripts by Dr. Nnedi Okorafor, Akata Witch, Akata Warrior, and Akata Woman. Akata Woman is the latest book. It just came out. 
And it is amazing. And in this book, we are following a Nigerian American albino girl named Sunny. And Sunny finds out that she is a leopard person, which is a witch. And she is navigating, stepping into the world of magic while also still being a part of the human world and trying to hide all of this from her family. So there's a magical academy, there is a ragtag group of friends who have to go on journeys and missions together. It is one of the most sweet, touching, relatable stories that I have ever read. Sunny is one of my favorite characters. The world building is gorgeous. The audiobooks are phenomenal. I absolutely love everything about this series. It is one of my new favorite series. Like I have no doubt that this book is going to be somewhere in my favorite books of the year list. Absolutely amazing. I love the relationship that exists between the friends and the way that this book unapologetically centers and showcases Nigerian mythos and life and beauty and culture. It is such an amazing, powerful story of friendship and magic and self-love and family and complexity and disability. And it is so good. We have another YA fantasy, which is Kingdom of Souls. This is another amazing book where we are following a young girl named Ara, who is very, very, very ambitious. Ara will stop at nothing to acquire magic. She comes from a very, very powerful family of witch doctors but she herself does not have any powers. And so she essentially agrees to sell her soul in exchange for magic when a bunch of children in her city start going missing. I once laughed at stories about demons. Now I know that one may walk in my shadow. This book is so beautiful. This is another book that has a sequel that I really, really need to read. I think that the third book in the trilogy comes out this year. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it does. Another book that's going to get an adaptation and just cannot wait for. The world building is so cool. There's a sibling rivalry. There's a really creepy sibling situation in here, to be honest. There is the I belong, but I don't belong trope. There is blood magic. And I loved the blood magic. I loved the world building. I love the complex relationship that Ara has with her mom. Her mom totally sucks. It's just really good. And I personally love books that have a ruthless kind of cutthroat style protagonist, especially if that protagonist is female and you should read it. Now I have two graphic novels to recommend. The first one is Nani. This is set in Nigeria and we are following two siblings who are recovering from a trauma. Mina, one of the siblings, was robbed at gunpoint and she ended up getting really really good at martial arts as a result of it and her sister has kind of been carrying her emotionally and also enduring the weight of this horrible thing that happened to Mina and the two of them end up being thrown into this like magical world all of a sudden and they have to navigate that and try to get home and it is so good the colors are beautiful I love the artwork it's just so gorgeous and so vivid I mean just look at this you know what I'm saying it's absolutely stunning so beautiful and then the last one that I have here is Little Girls this is a horror fantasy comic that is set in Ethiopia and we are following two girls these girls are trying to survive this brain-eating monster that is lurking in the woods and it's pretty good the panels are very straightforward, non-cluttered, clear storytelling. And it's a really, really good comic. Like, I think you guys would enjoy this. My friends, do not forget to check out these amazing books put out by PETA Entertainment. Their information is linked in the description box below. Please support them in any way that you can, share and boost them. They're doing such powerful, amazing work. And a big thank you to PETA Entertainment for sponsoring this video. What is your favorite book of any genre with an African setting? If you want to give me some more fantasy books with an African setting, recommendations? leave them in the comment section down below. If you want more content from me, I have a Patreon where I upload exclusive content for my wonderful patrons only. This month's dedicated video is going to be me talking about great books with awful Goodreads ratings and I'm so excited to make that video for them. But all my social media links will be in the description box below. Stay safe, stay sane, and I hope to see you in my next one.